I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer, but really we are all about the strategy to help you survive and thrive the, actually it's more than just an economic crisis that we're already in or an economic reset, it's a full reset. So. Uh, with that, I'm going to take some questions and Jim and Margie ask uh, 2A, we think black markets running on barter and junk silver will appear after the new digital dollars start and VAT taxes are enacted. I would, I would agree with that. For those who can grow extra food for barter mm -hmm, and have silver, this will be okay. How do I see this unfolding? Well, you know, there's always a black market, so I would agree with that. Uh, for those that don't uh, know about the VAT taxes, VAT, value added tax. So there are a bunch of little taxes that are added along the way. Uh, those have been enacted in many parts of the rest of the world, not yet in the U.S., but I agree with, with Jim and Margie that they, I think they're definitely coming. And they start out usually pretty small and so that you don't think they're really any big deal and they don't really change anything, but then before you know it, they can grow and grow and grow. So that's actually how I think it will unfold, that it'll start out like really small. But I also think that we're about to have some universal basic income and people are going to start spending that money. And that's when the hyperinflation comes in. And I also do think that the food has already started on that trajectory because of the breakdown in the supply chains. But there's more things that are happening in that. And I can tell you that food becomes the single biggest issue for people during these, during hyperinflation or during these global resets. So I think, I think it's already started off slow, but I think it's already begun to pick up steam. And I think it's going to, once that steam fully kicks into gear, I think it's going to go pretty quickly. And yes, there will be a black market. There's always a black market. That doesn't mean that you get full value for, you know, I mean, I've had a lot of people say to me, well, pff, they'll take my gold out of my cold dead hands. I'm going to never give up my, my uh, bullion gold. Well, that's where you're going to be able to use the bullion is in the black market, but they're not going to give you full value because you'd be taking a risk. They're going to be taking a risk. So... And then uh, Texas has its own gold, gold depository, the Texas Bullion Depository, created by the Texas government in 2015 and underwritten 100% by Lloyds of London. We wonder if the feds could seize gold from there or will Texas say, come and take it again? What have you heard about state depositories, if anything? Really haven't heard a whole lot about state depositories. But I do think that we're, we're already seeing the division because Texas also legalized gold and silver as legal tender, as did a number of other states, though the federal government has not done so yet. So it will likely be, you know, this, there's already battles brewing between state governments and, fe and the federal government. It'll be interesting to see if they were to go in and try and take it. Well, it would be a very interesting turn of events. Uh, and Joe asks, I received an EIDL loan from the SBA of $92,500 for my business, and it's currently in my business account unspent. If the currency is reset and those funds get reduced by, let's say, a thousand times, will I still owe the $92,50 even though I would no longer have that amount? Sure, because you borrowed the 9250. Even if they reset that amount to the lower amount, you know, typically it is not the normal enterprise or the normal individual that benefits from these resets. It's the government that benefits from these resets. So, uh, yeah, you might want to do something with that 92.50, you might want to buy a certain amount of gold to make sure that you can pay that back 
you know, fixed rate debt is a beautiful thing. And some of that loan may be um, forgiven too. So I don't know what the terms of your loan is. I'd take a look at that. And I would consider diversifying into a certain level of asset protection gold that will cover that amount if you have to pay it back in full if you maintain you know, the amount in your account and it goes down a thousand times. That's what I would say. You want to be properly diversified so that you can pay that back. Just like I've done with my mortgage. I mean, I could pay the mortgage off, but why would I use dollars that actually have some purchasing power today that I can buy gold with? Let me convert that gold into those dollars after it's gone to its fundamental value or somewhere around there anyway and pay that mortgage off with dollars that have no value. I'd say the same thing about that. And Samantha says, if one is receiving payments on a monthly basis for an asset like real estate, is there a way to structure the contract to receive a payment that is pegged to the value of a commodity like gold? Yes, it's called a gold clause. You want to put the gold clause in those contracts and that fixes the amount of gold to the amount of dollars. So for example, and I'm just going to do this to make life simple. That was really, really common prior to 33. When they confiscated the gold in 33, they, um, they said that the gold clauses were no longer legal, but they were re-legalized, I believe, in 86. So yes, and let's say, let's say, I'm just going to make life easy. Let's say it's a monthly payment of 2,000 and spot is at 2,000 an ounce. Then what you're doing is you're saying it's 2,000 or one ounce of gold and it's at your discretion which one you pick up. Now spot goes to 5,000, okay? Then you can say, all right, that's what it is. I want the one ounce of gold. So yes, it's called a gold clause that is part of the other side of the strategy. Put it in your contracts now, why not? It's perfectly legal and a very good thing to do. Amber asks, I have about 30 years of retirement contributions tied to my current employment in a 403B account mm -hmm, that I cannot access while still employed. Yes. The only options for these funds are associated with the stock market bond funds and things such as these through approved organization, hmm, TIAA Craft, Fidelity, and Voya. Shocker. Since I moved everything out of stock at the beginning of March, right now the funds are mostly in Fidelity, oh, Fidelity Government Money Market and TIAA Traditional Guarantees 3% Interest. Okay, um, and by the way, if I can get this done, I'm planning on doing a whole piece on both uh, the changes that the FDIC is is talking about doing with savings account as well as changes in money markets upcoming and I'm going to try and get that done for you this week. So definitely watch that. Uh, and uh, let's see, I'm 58 and work for a college that doesn't participate in social security. So this money is intended as my primary only retirement resource. I'm very concerned about the current economic circumstances. Yes, and the impact this will have on my retirement savings because everything is locked in in the stock market-based system. What tips or advice do you have that could help protect the savings within the constraints I've described? Well, it, it's 403Bs. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean that that's pretty much what I say. So I don't know that there is really... Now, I can tell you, though, that Fidelity does have a physical gold account. Whether or not your 403B would be eligible per, to participate in that, Amber, contact your administrator and see if you would have access to Fidelity's physical gold account. So... If you do, then again, you want to be as diversified as possible. But if you don't, you're going to have to do the diversification outside of that 403B. 
and we have the formulas in there to determine how much gold you need to properly cover it, kind of like I was talking about with the mortgage. So if you have 100,000 in there, you know, you might need to cover it with 10 ounces of gold. So if you, if you, if you can or if you can't, because even if you do it with fidelity, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. It is merely your perception that you do. So I think really um, you should plan on, if you, I don't even know if you can take a loan against it or if you can do an in-service withdrawal roll over election. I mean, pr you probably can't, but I would call my administrator and see what my options are. And I would try to get as much as I could out of that but barring that, you want to diversify by buying physical gold that you can take possession of that would cover this. So if that all goes away, you're covered. And that's what you got to do. I'm sorry, but that's what you got to do. I wish there was another choice. And uh, I have some... Mm, this is also from Amber. I have some self-directed HSA and Roth IRA funds that can hold precious metals. You've mentioned concerned about gold bullion in these types of accounts being confiscated. Do you believe silver bullion held in these accounts would be less likely to be confiscated? Yes. But do you believe HSA precious metal accounts are as equally at risk as IRAs? Yes, because if you don't hold it, you really don't own it regardless of what your perception is. And since you've already paid your taxes on the Roth, why are you holding it there? Right? So that your gains aren't taxable. But these could be the places where you can pull the funds to make sure that your main form of retirement is covered. Because I think with an HSA, you can pull that. And with a Roth, you can pull that. And I know that there are, depending upon how long you've held them, et cetera, that some of those fees, um, you don't have any fees associated with it. And you don't have any taxes associated with the Ross. I'm not, I don't think that's true with the HSA. All right. So that could be a place for you to pull the money to make sure that you've got the lion's share covered. But why keep it in the system? Get it out. Get it out while you can. We're losing time. We're losing choice. Look at what's going on. This is not even being hidden. And Amber, you are busy typing. If some of the advantages of purchasing pre-33 gold are that it doesn't have to go through probate and uh, purchases are not reported or tracked by the government, are there purchase thresholds or other factors that I should be aware of to ensure maintaining anonymity? For example, if a certain amount is purchased at once or over a certain time frame, does that create complicating factors? No, you can buy as much as you want, as often as you want. Uh, and, you know, truly it's a private position, but I've got to say this because all good citizens always pay all taxes that are due, but it is the most private position that you can have. It's like your last private position, quite honestly. So, you know, and the other part of this is, remember, I don't care what anybody says. I was standing in that room with my Uncle Al when he had safes full of pre-33 collectible gold coins, probably at least 3,000 ounces when it was illegal in any other way to hold more than five ounces, he held maybe at least 3,000 ounces. So, and, and I'll tell you, the other great thing that he taught me was how the tangible markets move from undervaluation to fair valuation to overvaluation to fair valuation to undervaluation in a figure eight. The reason why this really doesn't work with those fiat money markets is because the currency goes away. Poof, it's gone. So absolutely, uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, this is an amber, <laughs> okay. And Lynette has spoken about having different types of coins for various purposes 
uh, such as taxes, paying off mortgages, bartering, yes. Can she expand some of this aspect of the strategy? Uh, I think that I kind of did this, uh, but you're going to be, you, you know, really, what are you trying to do? There's That depends on, you're going to buy the kind of gold, like, for example, taxes, right? Property taxes will be going up. Even during the Depression, if you did not pay off your property tax, if you didn't pay your property taxes, you could have had the house completely paid off and you lost the house. But for that, I don't want a rare gold coin. Right? What I want is barterable gold. So fractional gold under an ounce that I can just sell whatever little bit I need to pay those taxes as it comes up. Um, and the mortgages, well then I'm still going more for asset protection because it's a debt. So I think that a better conversation and one that would be more specific to you, Amber, is to call and talk to one of our consultants and ask them these questions and let them put everything for you on a spreadsheet so you'll know how much gold you need to cover your 403B and you'll know how much gold you need or silver you need to sustain your current standard of living. But when you're getting to pure asset protection, you want a variety of sizes. In silver, I love dimes because it's easier to put two dimes together than to break a quarter in half. I mean, it's pretty simple. So, um, so yes, but to go into that specifically for your specific circumstance and goals, call and talk to, talk to us and we'll lay that out for you. And uh, for, for personal and business precious metal storage, I'm using the Texas Bullion Depository because it is nearby and also is moving in the direction of allowing depositors to use their bullion in their accounts as money completely outside of the Federal Reserve System via debit credit cards in the future. I understand it is the only government affiliated depository of its kind in the U.S. because it is state government uh, affiliated though. I also have apprehension regarding my assets being vulnerable to confiscation. Well, of course. What is your take on the TBD? I've tried to hedge on the best of both worlds by having established TBD accounts with minimal deposits, keeping most of my holdings elsewhere so that I can add to the TBT if it seems safe and wise later. Well, you know, like anything, I really do think that you want to be well diversified. So I think you're really wise in holding some at the TBD, the Texas Depository Trust. Wait, well, anyway, thank you. Texas Bullion Depository. Thank you, Megan. Um, so, you know, what's my feeling on it? Well, you know, I, I think it's a great option. Uh, I can walk to my private vault if I had to walk there. So I'd say keep your holdings diversified. That's what you need to do. And you can also look at, well, you know, this I'm not going to, this is what I'm going to need to access this. So you want that closest, like for your paying your property taxes, you probably want that gold and silver to be closest to you. And then, you know, you might be able to do something that's further out if you're not going to need to access it. But again, I think that's a great conversation to have with one of the consultants and strategize on that. But I think you're doing a great job if, you, if you're with them and, and you have already established accounts there. I like that very much because I feel like they're, they're more likely to do some level of protection. But I, And Texas has always been like that, very independent kind of state. They have legalized gold and silver as legal tender. It will be very interesting to see what this battleground looks like in the future. So... Uh, this week, I was on, or I'm about to be on with Jason Hartman, and we're going to be talking real estate. So that is going to be really interesting. 
I also have a coffee with Lynette with Kerian Van Hest, and we're going to be talking about the death of the COMEX, where trade are standing for delivery. This is a very big deal. I'm really excited to have that conversation. And next week on Coffee with Lynette, I will be with Egon Von Greers, my good friend. Wish I could do it in Switzerland, but we'll have to stay in, in hot Phoenix, although it is cooling off now. And uh, there's so many moving parts to the gold markets these days. I really am excited to talk to him. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and send them in to questions at itmtrading.com. Make sure you visit our blog. That's where you find all of my blog posts, as well as all of the images and the links to all my research. And if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that if you are not a current subscriber, hit that bell and subscribe. We'll let you know when we're going on air. And it is absolutely time to cover your assets. And you do that with the Wealth Shield, which is made up of physical gold and physical silver to support different goals and different needs. So until next we speak, please be safe out there. And thanks for all the questions, Amber. Bye-bye.